Welcome to Electro Online. It all started here. This is where Einstein began to think that there's something different about the concept of gravity other than what Newton proposed in his general theory and general equation of gravity. So, what's the difference? He called it the equivalent principle. In other words, if we have a situation like this where two people are on the earth and they're playing a ball game, they're throwing the ball back and forth from experience and having lived on an earth with gravity, they pretty well know what that ball is going to do and how they need to toss the ball back and forth in order to be able to play a game. Einstein claimed, and this was amazing because at the time that Einstein thought about these theories, it was long before any sort of rockets and spaceships had been sent into space, but he imagined if you could have a vehicle like this that traveled through space and that could turn on engines so that the object, that the vehicle could accelerate at the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second square, that the very same two people could be inside the spaceship playing the very same game and they would not be able to tell the difference. That's the principle of equivalence. They would not know if there were no windows and there was no realization of being on the spaceship. Whatever they experienced gravitationally, any experiment they could possibly do on board of the spaceship versus on the Earth, the result would be exactly the same. The timing, the falling, the, everything about what happens here and here would be identical. You could not tell the difference. Now, the real difference is that here you are indeed on the Earth. There's indeed an acceleration due to gravity. There's a force of gravity. But in space, far away from any planets and stars and anything else that could cause the effect of gravity, if the spaceship were to no longer accelerate or simply drift in space, everything would be weightless. People would just be floating around the spaceship and you couldn't play that very same game. But the moment the spaceship begins to accelerate at 9.8 meters per second square, the effect would be such that gravity would be felt in the very same way that gravity would be felt on the Earth. Matter of fact, you could not tell the difference. And because of that, Einstein began to think that there was something different about the concept of gravity as being forces between two objects. So, carry that a little bit further. Here, let's do another experiment. Let's say we're inside a house, and it turns out that some of our kids used to play that game. We have a, a place in our house where the hallway is kind of narrow, but we have two vertical walls side by side. And then we take some of those little super balls, the ones that bounce really well, and they would take it and they would throw it as hard as they could in one direction against the wall and then the ball would bounce back and forth and eventually hit the ground. The object of the game was to throw it the hardest possible so you have the maximum number of bounces before it hits the ground. Whoever could do that was the winner of the game. So you can imagine the game where you throw a super ball back and forth and it would bounce back but in subsequent uh, travels across the hallway the ball would fall more and more each time and eventually the ball would hit the ground because the ball of course is accelerating towards the earth. Well we could play that very same game in that spaceship. We can build two vertical walls, we could go in the spaceship far away from the earth or any other planet or moon and we could then of course since there's no gravity fell there in any other way we can then accelerate the spaceship at g 9.8 meter per second square again take that ball throw it against the one wall and we could see the ball going back and forth falling to the earth as it did in the exact same way as in the hallway of our house wow again the principle of equivalence you could not tell the difference now let's take that argument one step more so einstein thought about it this way let's say we have that same spaceship now and we have two vertical mirrors instead of walls and we have a tiny little window at the top of the spaceship and a tiny little hole in the mirror where that window is. And let's say we shine a beam of light into the spaceship. So I need a beam of light going into the spaceship. And it goes through the little hole to the other side, bounces off the mirror, comes back. But since the spaceship is accelerating at G, 9.8 meters per second square, by the time the light beam makes it back, the hole has gone up a little ways and the, instead of going back through the hole and out the window, it hits the mirror on the other side and starts bouncing back and it bounces back and forth, back and forth. Of course, a whole lot more number of times on the ball because, of course, the, the light is traveling much faster. But in essence, the effect would be the same. In subsequent travels across the width of that distance between the two mirrors, you would see the light slowly going down more and more and more 
Of course, they've exaggerated what it looks like here, but in principle, you'd get the very same result as you have over there. The difference is the ball has mass and the light does not. But because the principle of equivalence, Einstein said that makes no difference. An object doesn't have to have mass. It can be completely devoid of mass like light, like a photon of light, and they would simply go across in the exact same fashion as the superballs. So therefore, because of the principle of equivalence, there's no difference in the effect on light as opposed to the effect on objects. And there's no difference in being on the Earth where the acceleration due to gravity is equal to g, or being in a spaceship that creates the essence, the acceleration equal to g. And because of that, he had a very different way of looking at the concept of gravity, and this was, in essence, the birth of the concept of the general theory of relativity. You must hand it to him. It was amazing to take that and then carry that thought further. Now, of course, when he proposed that, nobody believed him. Of course, I'm not sure if it's 100% that didn't believe him, but the vast majority of the scientific community simply did not accept his proposal that light was affected by gravity. They said that's simply impossible. Well, he was able to prove it in 1919. So, if you're interested in how we proved it, and how we became world famous because of that proof, stay tuned for the next video and we'll show you what happened in 1919. Yeah. So, was the end of World War II? Well, it was a little bit after World War II. Yeah. No, World War I. One, one. Yeah, okay. one. But that was not relative to that experiment. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are, we, um, are you implying that we uh, sound Earth because there was a little well? So we are stuck to the Earth because of the gravity well of the Earth. That's right. We can't move. We have to move at at least 11 kilometers per second to get away from the Earth, to get out of that curvature of space. <laughs> Hence the rockets.